Chapter 1 The Awakening of Sobic In the time before time, when the world was a mere whisper of the creation it would become, the gods walked with a purpose that shaped the land and the stars. Among them was Sobic, the crocodile king, a deity of immense power and primal force. His form was both fearsome and awe-inspiring, a perfect embodiment of the duality of nature, a man with the head of a crocodile, his eyes gleaming with ancient wisdom, his jaws capable of both nurturing life and delivering death. Sobic's dominion was the great river Nile, the lifeblood of Egypt, which flowed through the land like the veins of the earth. He was the guardian of its waters, the protector of its creatures, and the overseer of its fertility. The people of the land revered him, for they knew that his favor meant bountiful harvests and protection from the chaos that lurked beyond the riverbanks. As the centuries passed, the devotion of the people waned. Temples crumbled, prayers ceased, and the once glorious shrines were reclaimed by the sands. The gods, who once walked among their creations, became whispers on the wind, stories for the children, and legends of a forgotten age. Sobic, like his kin, slumbered in the realm of the gods, his presence in the world of mortals diminished to a mere echo of his former glory. But the world is a wheel, ever turning, and what once was lost can be found again. A time came when the land of Egypt was in peril. The Nile's waters faltered, the crops withered, and chaos threatened to consume the order that had been so carefully maintained. The Pharaoh, in his desperation, sought to awaken the ancient gods, to plead for their intervention and restore balance to the land. Under the light of a crescent moon, the Pharaoh led a procession of his most trusted priests and priestesses to the ruins of a temple long buried beneath the sands. It was here that the oldest stories told of Sobic's might, where his presence had once been strongest. With chants and offerings they called out to the crocodile king, beseeching him to rise once more and save their dying world. The ground trembled, the waters of the Nile stirred, and a deep, resonant sound echoed through the night. It was as if the very heartbeat of the river had quickened. Then, from the depths of the ancient waters, a figure emerged. The god stood tall and majestic, his scales glistening under the moonlight, his eyes reflecting the desperation of his people. Sobic had awakened. The pharaoh fell to his knees, and the priests and priestesses bowed their heads in reverence. The crocodile king surveyed his domain, the changes wrought by time apparent to his eternal gaze. He could feel the imbalance, the discord that had seeped into the land. With a voice that rumbled like the river's flow, Sobic spoke, his words carrying the weight of eons. I have heard your call, children of the Nile, the covenant between us shall be honored. I shall walk with you once more, and together we shall restore the harmony that has been lost. And so began the reawakening of Sobic, the crocodile king, whose return promised salvation for Egypt and a new chapter in the eternal dance between gods and men. Chapter 2 The Guardian's Vigil As the first light of dawn caressed the tips of the pyramids, casting long shadows over the awakening city, Sobic, the crocodile king, stood vigilant by the banks of the Nile. His eyes, ancient and knowing, watched over the waters that had once teemed with life, now sluggish and tainted with the touch of chaos. The people of Egypt, who had slumbered through the night, awoke to find their protector returned, a silent sentinel against the encroaching darkness. The pharaoh approached the river's edge, his heart heavy with the burden of his people's suffering. Great Sobic, he implored, you have returned to us in our time of need, as the prophecies foretold. But the Nile remains barren, and our people lose hope with each passing day. How can we revive the lifeblood of Egypt? Sobic turned his gaze upon the ruler of the land, his expression inscrutable. The river's ailment is but a reflection of the discord that festers in the hearts of men, the god rumbled. To heal the Nile, you must first restore the balance within your people. Only then can the waters run clear and pure once more. The pharaoh nodded, understanding the wisdom in Sobic's words. He pledged to unite his people, to mend the divisions that had weakened their once great civilization. 
Sobik, in turn, vowed to watch over them as they undertook this monumental task, his presence a constant reminder of the strength and resilience of the Nile. Days turned to weeks, and weeks to months. The pharaoh worked tirelessly, enacting decrees that promoted unity and cooperation among his subjects. He commissioned the restoration of Sobik's temples, ensuring that the god's worship was revived in the hearts of the people. And as the nation began to heal, so too did the river. Sobik's vigil was not without challenge. Dark forces, emboldened by the years of neglect, sought to undermine the efforts of the pharaoh and his people. Monstrous creatures, born from the shadows, crept forth from the river's depths, threatening to engulf the land in chaos once again. But Sobik was resolute. With the might that had carved the Nile from the earth itself, he battled the creatures, his jaws snapping with divine fury, his claws rending the darkness asunder. Each victory was a testament to his unwavering commitment to the protection of Egypt. As the balance was slowly restored, the Nile began to flourish. Fish returned to its waters, the reeds swayed with life, and the crops grew tall and verdant in the fields. The people rejoiced, their songs of praise to Sobik echoing through the cities and across the deserts. The Crocodile King's vigil had rekindled the bond between the gods and the people of Egypt. His watchful eye and steadfast protection served as a beacon of hope, guiding them through the trials of restoration. And though the path ahead was long and fraught with challenges, the Egyptians knew that with Sobik, the guardian of the Nile, at their side, they could weather any storm. For Sobik was not just a god of strength and ferocity, he was a deity of renewal and rebirth. And under his vigilant gaze, Egypt would enter a new era of prosperity, a testament to the enduring power of the Crocodile King. Chapter 3 The Fertility Blessing The land of Egypt basked in the warmth of a golden sun, its people thriving under the vigilant watch of Sobik, the Crocodile King. The Nile, once again a vibrant artery of life, nourished the fields and sustained the cities along its banks. Yet, for all the prosperity that had returned, there remained a whisper of longing in the air, a prayer for the most sacred gift of all, the blessing of fertility. The Pharaoh, wise and just, recognized the silent yearnings of his people. He knew that for Egypt to truly flourish, the land must yield its bounty, and the wombs of the women must carry the promise of new life. With reverence in his heart, he approached the river's edge where Sobik held his eternal vigil. O mighty Sobik, guardian of the Nile and master of its creatures, the pharaoh began, his voice echoing with the depth of his plea. Your strength has shielded us, your wisdom has guided us, and your might has restored the lifeblood of our land. We now seek your blessing of fertility, that our people may grow and our legacy endure through the ages. Sobik regarded the pharaoh with eyes that had seen the rise and fall of dynasties, the ebb and flow of life itself. He understood the delicate balance of existence, the intricate dance between death and birth. With a nod that sent ripples across the waters, the crocodile king consented to bestow the sacred blessing upon the land and its people. In the days that followed, Sobik journeyed through Egypt, his presence alone a harbinger of the fertility that was to come. He visited the fields where the farmers toiled, and with a sweep of his tail, he imbued the soil with richness. The grains grew taller and fuller, the orchards burst with fruit, and the scent of blossoming flowers filled the air. He ventured into the cities, where the people's hearts swelled with hope at the sight of their divine protector. Women touched by Sobik's shadow found themselves with child, their joyous laughter mingling with the songs of praise that rose to the heavens. The children born of this divine blessing were strong in hail, destined to lead Egypt into a future of endless possibility. But Sobik's blessing was not limited to the land and its inhabitants. He turned his gaze to the creatures of the Nile, ensuring their proliferation. The crocodiles, his sacred kin, thrived in the waters, their numbers a testament to the river's renewed health. Fish of all kinds darted through the currents, and birds flocked to the reeds, their nests cradling the next generation. As the seasons turned, the evidence of Sobik's blessing was undeniable. The harvests were plentiful, the population grew, 
and the laughter of children became the music of the streets. Egypt had entered an age of abundance, a time when the gods smiled upon the land and the people lived in harmony with the divine. The pharaoh, his heart full of gratitude, decreed a grand festival in honor of Sobik, the crocodile king. For seven days and seven nights the people celebrated, their voices raised in jubilant acclamation. They danced by the light of bonfires, feasted on the fruits of the harvest, and offered prayers of thanks to the god who had so richly blessed them. Sobik, watching over the festivities, felt a deep contentment. His connection to the people of Egypt was renewed, his purpose fulfilled. He had brought forth strength from chaos, unity from division, and now, life from the barrenness. The crocodile king had affirmed his place not only as a guardian but as a giver of life's most precious gift. And so, under the vigilant gaze of Sobik, Egypt prospered. The land was fertile, the people fruitful, and the bond between the mortal and the divine unbreakable. The fertility blessing had ushered in an era of unparalleled growth and happiness, a legacy that would echo through the annals of history, forever entwined with the name of Sobik, the Crocodile King. In the fullness of time, the name of Sobik, the Crocodile King, became synonymous with the enduring spirit of Egypt. His legacy, woven into the very fabric of the land, was a tapestry of strength, protection, and life's boundless renewal. The people, their hearts brimming with reverence, passed down the tales of the god who had risen from the depths to stand as their shield and benefactor. The Nile, ever flowing and bountiful, whispered his story to the reeds, which swayed with the rhythm of ancient hymns. The crocodiles, his sacred kin, bore the mark of his favor, their eyes reflecting the wisdom of their divine patron. And the children, born under the fertility blessing, grew to be the custodians of Sobik's teachings, their lives a testament to his influence. As the stars wheeled overhead, marking the passage of countless seasons, the temples of Sobik stood resolute, their stones etched with the chronicles of his deeds. Pilgrims journeyed from far and wide, seeking the blessings of the crocodile king, their offerings a tribute to his enduring presence. And though the gods may retreat to the shadows when their work is done, so big spirit remained indelible in the hearts of the people. For he had not only restored the land, but had also instilled a sense of unity and purpose that transcended the ages. In the end, the legacy of Sobik was not merely one of prosperity and abundance, but of the unbreakable bond between the divine and the mortal realm. His name, forever etched in stone and soul, continued to inspire those who walked the banks of the Nile, a river that flowed with the essence of life itself, carrying the eternal tale of the Crocodile King.